Hello, welcome to Answers TV. My name is Jack Duxbury, and today we'll be checking out the brand new Yamaha YC61. <laughs> right, Yamaha YC61. 61 keyboard, brand new thing from Yamaha, which is it's got a waterfall keybed, semi weighted waterfall keybed. Other things of note are we've got a Hammond engine in there, three Hammond engines using their VCM virtual circuit modeling technology. If you're a guitar player and you've landed on here, you might know that from the Helix series. Uh, we've also got three FM organs in there, which from my little bit of time with it are really good for copying those other type of kind of 60s organ sounds. Uh, we've got nine different effects in there, uh, pre-drive, two um, effects per key layer, and then we've got a couple send effects, speaker modeling, also on the Hammond side, we've got two different rotaries quickly at the flick of a switch, master reverb and a master EQ, which kind of sets it all off. I spoke a lot there. This video will involve a lot of talking uh, because there's a lot to get through, but look for our other videos where there'll be a no talking one and somewhere we're just flicking through the presets and having fun with it. Anyway, let's get into the video. Right, we're gonna go for a wander through the YC61. Firstly, look at it. I'm flying with the Maltese Falcon today. Whoop. Falcon, what do you think of it? Pretty lush. It is really lush. In our new video room, uh, let's jump in. We're on the first preset. If you want to flick through the presets and you come into the store or you've just bought it, you just turn this knob in the middle. Really high contrast screen. Jazz lead. Let's hear it. First one. Key, please, Christopher. C. Yeah, thank you, brother. <laughs> We've got something that sounds remarkably like a Hammond organ there. Uh, I'm in this next section of the video, I'm just gonna flick through. I like to work without presets when I'm working in my real life. So let's analyze what's going on here. We're in the organ section. Let's hear it again. <laughs> First things first, on the left, rotary speaker. Let's hear how it goes fast and let's hear how it goes slow. This is on slow at the moment. And then we're gonna ramp it up to fast in the middle of that note. Let's hear how it accelerates. I'm a bit excited there because I've got these drawbars that grab, which feel great, really nice color. And if you can see it on the camera up above, something unique, LEDs and drawbars combined. I've been dreaming of it for years, Falcon. I always thought back in my naughty days, there were just the LEDs and then they did the drawbars. Yamaha come along and go, <laughs> we're gonna combine the two of them. Uh, and what you heard there, hopefully, again, if I just do a more simple drawbar setting, and then I'll do the rotary again, just so you can really listen to it. It's a big part of it. Also got a stop mode, if you are a Brian Auger fan. So. Stop. Slow. Fast. Also, we've got two types of rotary. We'll keep with Yamaha's first preset. You think they set us off on the right path. I love that. So on other keyboards, you've got to do a bit of menu diving, but we can flick a switch here. Oh, I went off piece there. I went to the uh, amp modeling. Rotary A, Rotary B. Bit bright to me, bit more presence. I dig it, it's a nice little change. One of the things that when I went to Nam and I saw it and I seen some videos, uh, everything was rather dirty in the sounds and that's cool. I think that Yamaha is showing off the kind of quality of their drive circuit modeling with the VCM. Uh, so I'm just going to roll a bit of that back and we can hear the Hammond 
just in its naked state. So I might just high five you for a second, Chris. All right, you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Wicked, we just heard the rotary sounds there. And like I said, I promised we'd take off the effects and listen to the beast naked. Uh, I've got one drawbar out on the moment. Uh, so let's hear that on its own. Some lovely tone leakage in there, I love it. And um, I'm going to pull out some of the other drawbars. This is the Hammond aficionados out there. That's the bottom two. Bottom three, Jimmy Smith. Uh, I've got that pre-drive turned right down here. Uh, let's do the top two out with that. Now, I'm bad habit. I always like flicking the switch with my finger, but you can assign that. We've got foot controllers out there. Um, also, volume and um, fast and slow. So if you don't want to use your hands, it's cool. But force of habit. Let's do all the stops out. Feels good. A lot of. I know you're watching this video because you're not there playing it in the store. That's my angle on these videos. It's a proper, fully fledged waterfall keyboard. And for me, that means no pain when I'm doing all that stuff. Uh, and I'll talk about it when we get to the keyboard section how that feels. Anyway, so you've heard the drawbars in its naked state. Let's hear the percussion for you guys out there who want to hear that and do jazzy stuff. So that's with no percussion, we've got a slow speed. Now we're going to pop on the percussion, this is the third. We'll do soft. Second, normal. Killer, let's hear the vibrato without percussion. Uh, let's do a bit of a function band favorite. I'm going to put the chorus on and we'll start with one. VC, vibrato and chorus. Chorus, here we go. Second chorus. Third chorus. Wicked. I don't really use the vibrato a lot, but let's have a listen to that as well. Second vibrato. Third vibrato. Getting a bit wobbly for that 60s thing. So everything you'd want from a Hammond synth. Let's hear those different Hammond models here. We turn them with this knob. So on Hammond 1, uh, this is my favourite where I like to live with these bottom three. Uh, I'm going to change it just to, for simple harmonics so you can hear the difference in it. We'll do one draw bar out. One draw bar out. Second Hammond model. Third Hammond model. Let's do some other stuff and we can hear the nuances there. It was a bit percussive. I'll hold a longer note so you can hear it with some more draw bars. Hammond organ model van. Hammond organ model tool. Seems a bit creakier, older, more leakage in there. A bit like me. That's three, back to two. One. 
that's cool. I, what's nice is I can hear a difference. On some other keyboards, I struggle to hear the difference. Uh, but for you Hammond aficionados out there, hopefully that helped. Other important bit is next to the Hammond mode, before we go to the FM ones, we've got lower and upper sections. Now, check this out. Different colours. Come on, baby. That's what we're talking about. Uh, the amount of times I've flipped to the wrong thing on some other keyboards and uh, messed up my life and my career uh, by flicking. So you can see, and I think you can change the colours. We can change the yeah. colours? Yeah, killer. Uh, so that means for you out there, we could just quickly have two different settings. So. And what's cool is, and really say, say you saw this and went, oh, it's only 61 keys, and I wish they brought out an AA key model, and I like the weighted action. Don't worry about that. You can plug in another keyboard with the MIDI, and that will assign to what other keyboard you've got. So, and you can do that for the whole rest of the keyboard. Um, think of that like two whole keyboards that you've got in here. And if you want to kind of branch this out, just plug in another keyboard, and you can assign where those go. Um, again with the split points, but we'll get there. Let's listen to, we'll go back to the upper and hear these FM engines. I'm going to start with all the draw bars out and just do the same thing. Uh, we'll give it some summer loving. So really bright and six, let's do the second one. Third one. Let's do I told you I was going to be thorough, so stick with me. If you don't like, um, I know I'm waxing on, but there are other videos where you can hear me just playing it or in the presets. Let's do it. That's one. Let's do two. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, really like grimy that. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm throwing that through a. I'm so excited. I'm throwing that through a rotary. What? I'm. I'm just feeling it in my loins, Falcon. That I want to throw this through an amp. There we go. I've got. To just go move my car. Two seconds. Back in the room, I've moved my car, much to the excitement of the Maltese Falcon. Whoop. Left the same settings here. I was explaining that I reckon on these FM organs that you might not want to run it through a rotary. So here it is again, through the rotary. I'm going to whack it through some of these other more models. Let's go back to the cleaner uh, FM engine. So that's through a, it's called lead, this is crunch. This is double. And this is case. Let's go and we can change the tone on those. So let's flip around to the lead again, because that sounded good. Uh, whack it up be a bit hard sharp. I don't want to do that again. Uh, let's go no drive and see what that sounds like. And then off. So it's adding quite a lot of character even with no drive. Uh, let's crank it. Go crunch. Double. So yeah, great. And that, you can run anything through that. Uh, but I think it's very applicable to listen to those on the FM organ engines. Let's move in to the keyboard section you dig. Hey, we're going to the keyboard section now. 
I just wanted to bring to your attention that we've been in one preset and to show you how tactile it is and how on off, all these switches here for on off, that was the organ sound we had, we turned that off, now we've got, we got nothing, I turn on the keyboard section A, I'll explain that in a minute, this is what comes up, this is a piano, it says U1 on there, let's have a listen. letting it ring out. So we've got no effects on there at the moment. Let's flick through some of the models you've got in there. This big red switch, which I think is really cool and looks like a tutti frutti a bit. Um, we're on the U1, let's hear the C7. I'm gonna repeat the same kind of motif, Yamaha. Old school. Uh, and uh, so you can hear the difference. So here's the U1 with some F minor E, C major -y stuff. I was playing around with the octave, so I'm going to put that down. You want? Let's do... Uh, if I hold this a little bit, it goes into a list. Oh, there we go, C7. to S700. Always like the S700. CFX. What have we got going on here? CP80s, piano and string. Let's hear a bit of CP80. We're going in depth today. CP82. Just want to show you the breadth that we've got in there. We've also got some combo ones, piano and strings. Now, that's interesting because they've given you a layered sound, but you don't need to worry about that. If you're like, oh, I want to change the balance of that, we've got A and B. So, might be a good place to just show you that. It's really important on this keyboard. Uh, so, at the moment, A down here, I've got switch switch, I turn it off, I got nothing. I put this on, let's put it back to a C7 because we're posh. Again, and you're listening, no reverb at this point. Now, I want to layer it. I turn on B. Now, you can see it here on the screen, hopefully, we've got really useful little bit of information here. Uh, and it's doubled up. Everything's like, you can't really miss it. So here, we've got L and R buttons, and that is what zone of the keyboard, left and right, you're going to be in. So if I tap that, I'm now, it's going to be all over the keyboard, both A and B, Left and right are active, so I should have a proper split, but I want to change that not to a glockenspiel. Let's find something like, let's go for a synth, and let's find a, something padded, and we'll, we'll hope that it works out. Ding, 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 ding. We'll have some background music whilst I do it. Mm. Okay, cool. Hey, we've got a mystic pad, and you'll hear it together. Here we go. Mm, 
bit of afters from Yamaha there. Now that's cool. Now I want to adjust the layer of that mystic pad. A little bit too mystic for me. I want to bring it down. No worries. Because I'm in B on here, I can turn that down. So. Now also, also here in B, I want that to be an octave up, so let's listen to that. And that's how you work between the layers. Always thinking, okay, if I'm working in splits or layers, am I in, on A? I've got a look there, it's also on the screen, and if I'm doing with a split, let's do a split, let's do that, um, so you can hear the split a bit better, no, we'll keep the same sounds, we're going to go, and so A, I want to be, my piano to be up on the right, so I'm just going to flick that till it says r r right, so I've got that up there, and then I'm going to go B, and I'm going to put that on the left, so I should have the pad down there, the piano up there, so... And what's cool is I'm here, I want a bit more of that pad now. Now that first note, sorry for speaking over it, Falcon. <laughs> for that first note, um, let's find out where the split point is. So that's where my split, that's where my split point is. Now I want to change the split point. Oh, it's gonna be really hard. It's not going to be very hard. You're just going to hold split point and hit it. So now I've changed it to C, which is where I wanted it to be. Actually, I want it to be <laughs> C sharp so I can play that F minor. Cool, so let's keep there. We're meandering through this. It's the first time I've sat at it, and we've got, let's keep building this sound up. Uh, it would be nice to have a little bit of reverb on there. Now, I can apply effects in a number of ways. Let's say I want to just put a reverb over the whole thing. That's cool. Boosh. I'm going to turn this on. Let's see what happens. And the depth. So we've got global reverb over that there. Uh, I can also, this is really well done as a send. So I can actually choose how much I send to each, each section. I won't demo that, but that just means you can use that effect block and choose how much will be on each A or B. Now, let's start pimping out some of these. Uh, the other way we could put reverb on there is we could turn that off, is we actually, per A and B layer, we can, use the effect spot. Now, this is really a key point in this keyboard. Other competitors in there, Nord and Korg, uh, you've got to shell out a lot more money to be able to choose what effect you want on what part. It's one of the things that they kind of leave for their um, you know, stage models up at the top there. And I think this is such a bonus. Let's, um, I'm gonna make up another pad, a patch just to show this off, all right? Two seconds. I was gonna show you how the effects work per layer. And uh, I've changed the sound to an electric piano sound. I think it's a nice point just to hear some of these electric piano sounds in isolation with no effects on. So the first one is called 78 Roads. Flip through a few more of them. This is 75 Roads Funky. See how they bark.
And that's what I wanted to hear. All the other demos I heard had a lot of drive on, and you can hear that the samples are killer on their own. So, um, 73 rows. Let's keep flicking, 67. Back to there, let's have a listen. We've also got some other cool like, FM sounds in here. Power clavy. Oh. Woo! Oh. Uh. Killing the DX stuff as well. I like it. I mean, we're dealing, yeah, we're dealing with the Yamaha, so obviously the DX stuff is incredible. Right, back to the point of this, Jack. Think about it. Right, 78 rows, we got it there. Now, I want to make that a little bit more interesting. This is where I think you're gonna use these effects blocks. Uh, so I'll turn it on. First thing that comes on is a distortion. Let's listen to that. And that shows you a bit about having sat at this for about five minutes, is that there's a lot of ways to do it. Uh, I could, Turn on, turn that off, and turn on the speaker model in here if I wanted to. Let's give that a go, and put that on key A. But then I could put it on here. So you see you, how you assign it. You can build very complex patches using different sections, very much like any flagship workstation keyboard and this is for guys out there you could save a lot of money if you're the type of guy that isn't turned on by menus and screens you can still get these kind of posh results stuff that suits your workflow but all in a very practical way this stuff turns me on anyway i want to put a uh let's put a uh tremolo on it so i'll have a little tr look for a tremolo okay we've got Delays, touch wah, boo -ga -doo -ga -doo -ga -doo. Here we go, went simple rotary, auto pan. Let's do that one. So we got that pretty cool kind of neo soli type sound there going. Now uh, let's show off that we can put another reverb, uh, another effect on there. Maybe a touch of chorus if I can find it. Actually. Check this out, lo-fi effect. So. And you can hear it reducing the bit rate. So all you lo-fi hip hop heads out there, but I, I think it's a bit clangy there, so but. On, really cool kind of grimy distortion. without it. No effects. See how quick it is, on and off. People are shouting at you, or just for yourself, your own brain, it's nice and quick. So we've got that, and maybe I want to put a lead sound in my right hand. I probably want to whack that up an octave, because I want to play it down there. Cool, and then I'm gonna make sure that this is assigned to the left side. Still there, I got nothing. Split points there, cool. Let's turn on B and find a sound to go with. All right, it's got a sine wave lead on there already. And I just had a little bit of a fiddle there.
and modulation, this is really important. If you know this kind of price range and what your options were as a vintage keyboard dude, that maybe like now and again, someone said, yeah, but you do sledgehammer and things like that and you need to do a bit of wiggling. You'd have to spend a lot of money to get uh, a lot more money than this to get that functionality. And this is a game changer, an absolute game changer that you can go out, play all your legit vintage sounds, be vintage, but now and again, someone wants you to rip a Moog solo. You can do that now, Moog solo. Sorry, all you guys out there. You can do that on this. You don't need to take another keyboard. I love it. Anyway, I'm getting excited. Let's do it. Now, it's a bit bland. That, that's cool, because we got no effects on there. I can go to B, and now I'm addressing my fan wave. And I maybe want to make that a little bit dirty. So let's use the amp sims on this. Uh, lead, oh yay, and we're going to put it on B and see what c comes out there. Much better. On. Put the tone down. And let's use this effect block here as well. I think this would be really cool. This is almost like a secondary send effect. If I turn this on and I'll maybe want to put a little bit of delay on there. Let's see if I can find one. Ooh. I can feel myself loosening my grip on my wallet. Right, uh, tempo analog delay. Let's do an analog delay. And then, so we're going to send it to B. Got a tap tempo. Let's slow it down. Oh, cool. Let's do it. I want to get more repeats on that. Let's see if I can get more repeats going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I'm going to turn that level down because now it's a bit dirty. Now, I might have under it uh, because that doesn't seem to have a repeat thing. Let's see if I can find it in here. If I turn this on here and find a delay in here and I can prove what I think might be possible. Digital delay. Let's do <laughs> cool, I dig it. Oh, and we've got other cool stuff in there. Say that's a bit bright. I've got a filter. Let's put a filter. So I'm uh, kind of bring that back. And uh, I'm going to show that off. So I hope you've seen there how you can do a lot with effects, different parts, different layers, splits, all posh stuff. Just for anyone thinking, oh, I want to hear what the filter sounds like on a piano, which is me, not you. Me, I'm going to be selfish. And I'm going to find, um, let's go with the U1. So we've got an upright piano. Uh, go back to that F minor thing. Uh, turn off the effects. And we're going to make it all over the keyboard. Change the octave. So that's just a U1 piano. One preset. I haven't moved presets. I'm working in there. And why I like doing that is that, uh, imagine you're building your sounds for your set. You can just save these off into memory each time. Just save as, save it into initial patch. Um, it's got bucket loads of storage in here. This live set button's in the middle. 
it's really easy. Pages and numbers, killer. Everything right on the front, even a panel lock, which is really good with all these switches. If you're worried about it, you can just lock it off in two seconds. Anyway, let's um, hear what that filter sounds like. Now, I want to put on a little bit of reverb. That's cool, I can do it. Just seeing, I'm flicking things on and off, really positive changes. And when I flick this, every time I turn a knob, it's represented on the screen, but what's cool is they put the CC value. So if you're using external bits of kit and you want to control it, or you've got a MIDI controller in the studio, you're using main stage or Ableton, and you want to kick out changes, or even a foot controller. Um, yeah, got the FC7 down there, works perfectly with that. I'm gonna show it off. If you are in the market, <laughs> for a foot control, just buy that. FC7. I know people have asked me before, what do you use? And I know Roland have got the FV500. Uh, it's a lot flimsier. It may be a little bit cheaper, it's flimsier. You have to find the TRS cable all the time. And this wraps up and goes in there. Just get one of those. So that was a little interlude, a little plug for the old FC7, exciting times. Hey. I think we've gone through a lot of it. Hey, let's, we've got a master equalizer as well. This is not savable in the memory, but that's a cool thing because you turn up to a gig and it's a little bit woofy. Uh, and you think all your sounds, or there's, uh, you've got a monitor wedge and the monitor guy's not being nice to you and listening to you, he's on his phone, you know, trying to get someone on Tinder. Uh, I've just turned that, let's turn that off. Turn it on, I've taken all the bottom end out. Uh, let's show you how drastic that is. And also a sweepable mid, so if you're thinking, I can't hear myself, but the bottom end's all right, I want to be a bit more pokey, Lafarge. Without. Oh, so even if you're just doing piano all night and you're a piano vocalist, you don't have to worry about uh, changing your preset. You can just turn this on at the gig and set it and forget it. Anyway, I, I hope that has taken you through it. We, um, I really haven't had a lot of time with it, but. I felt very familiar on it being a guy, I've been a big Nord head for years, and I think if you, this has changed the game, Falcon. I think we've got a few more keyboards out there that are creating real competition, and this uh, has got everything I'd want in there. And action-wise, uh, you saw me playing the piano, that's great for the piano. It's a little bit, like I said, it's semi-weighted, waterfall, it works, but the whole dual keyboard thing, if you've got a controller you like, you can use it any I'm waffling on. Check the website for the price. It's gonna be uh, out and look for when it's come. We've been very lucky from Yamaha to bring it along for us today. Keep an eye out for it. Uh, also, <sighs> more importantly, the most important thing, check it out, Falcon. <laughs> Now, another reason why I bought other keyboards was the accessories, but this is why I might be buying this keyboard. We've even got a little little pouch in there that you can live in, Falcon, if you want. Take you on holiday. 
on the trip back to Malta. Um, yeah, I'm just showing it off. I'm very impressed by it. Sturdy as <laughs> Wear that on the train. <laughs> anyway, let's play ourselves out. And uh, thanks for watching today. If you like what we're doing, consider subscribing. If you don't, let us know. Me and the Falcon learn from the hate. And uh, we're trying to make things better. Anyway, Yamaha YC61.